I swear, man, some people just have way too much time on their hands. What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I want to talk about this Oculus VR headset that apparently is designed to get you sent up out of here in real life if you lose playing a video game. Now, I don't know why the inventor of this device thought this was a great idea, but apparently they felt like it was needed in this world for some strange reason. So here we are. So let's check this out. Says Oculus founder says he made a VR headset that can kill you if you die in a game. So once again, why is this even a thing? Look, I'm not much of a video game player these days, but I cannot imagine video game being that intense to where I actually risk getting myself sent up out of here just for playing a video game. I don't even know how we got to this point, but apparently we're here now, right? Article says original Oculus VR founder Palmer Lucky has created a VR headset he claims can actually kill its users if they die in a game. Says, don't worry though, this product isn't coming to market anytime soon. This product isn't coming to market anytime soon. How about this product is never coming to market? Why do we got to have it say anytime soon? What does that mean? Does that mean it's going to come to market next week, next month, next year, 10 years from now? Like, why is this even a thing to where this product would actually come to market to where you have to label it as anytime soon? This is strange. It says, don't worry, though. This product isn't coming to market anytime soon from the sound of it. And hopefully it never does. It'll be pretty bad for business to kill off your entire consumer base, right? It says, where did the idea come from? It says, it's a concept that sounds plucked from a cult classic sci-fi horror film where it says ever see the 2006 flick stay alive i've never seen that flick have no idea what that's about it says but gain traction through sword art online a popular japanese novel series that helped drive consumer interest in the oculus rift headset its premise vr users can control avatars with their brain using a nerve gear helmet but once they enter the game they learn they can only exit via completion and if you die in the game you die in real life jesus christ i'm currently watching this show called the peripheral right now where this woman she put this little headset thing on and it somehow teleports her to the future and she could do all this crazy goofy matrix style type of stuff and i think part of this storyline based off of what i've seen so far is that i think she could actually potentially die in real life if she dies in that game so here's the thing i don't know if these movies and tv shows are predicting what's actually coming down the pipe in real life but apparently we seem to be moving towards that direction because you can die in these tv shows with these headsets on and now we got goofy dudes out here making real life headsets that you can get yourself sent up out of here if you die in the video games like why is this even a thing y'all article says the idea of tying your real life to your virtual avatar has always fascinated me you instantly raise the stakes to the maximum level and force people to fundamentally rethink how they interact with the virtual world and the players inside of it says so lucky in a blog post where he announced his newly developed piece of technology so his pumped up graphics might make a game look more real he continues but only the threats of serious consequences can make a game feel real to you and every other person in the game this is an area of video game mechanics that has never been explored despite the long history of real world sports revolving around similar stakes why is this a thing y'all why are people actually making video games that can kill you why is this a thing so how the vr headset actually kills you it says rather than trying to fry your brain with extraordinarily powerful microwaves like the fictional nerve gear does lucky rig the headset with explosive charges that go straight to your noggin so you got a headset on with some doggone c4 strapped to your brain essentially what the heck is going on here it says i use three of the explosive charge modules I usually use for a different project, tying them to a narrow band photo sensor that can detect when the screen flashes red at a specific frequency, making game over integration on the part of the developer very easy. When an appropriate game over screen is displayed, the charge fires, instantly destroying the brain of the user. Why is this a thing? It says we have the headset, where's the game? It says the headset itself isn't perfected yet, much less developing a game to properly deploy the this sort of experience if it would even be illegal article says i have plans for an anti-tamper mechanism that like the nerve gear would make it impossible to remove or destroy the headset goes on to say even so there are a huge variety of failures that could occur and kill the user at the wrong time this is why i have not worked up the ball <laughs> 
This is why I have not worked up the balls to actually use it myself. And also why I'm convinced that like an SAO or whatever the heck SAO is, the final triggering should really be tied to a high intelligence agent that can readily determine if conditions for termination are actually correct. So your man invents this product and is terrified of using his own product. I don't blame him, but still, why did you make this thing to begin with? All right. So what does this thing look like? Let's see. All right, so here's the actual headset, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm assuming that these are the explosive devices that will go off and turn your brain into a pile of mush if you lose the video game. I guess where I'm lost and confused at is like, why did he even make this? What is the purpose of this? Just to say that you did it? Because what's going to happen is somebody else is going to come out with their own headset like this, and they're possibly going to start selling this on the black market. And you're going to have some idiots out there who want to go out there and play Russian roulette with this thing. And this, you know, heads are going to be popping all over the place. It seems like the more advanced humans get the dumber humans get so so what's next says lucky concludes his blog post noting that although the physical device exists at this point it's just a piece of office art a thought-provoking reminder of unexplored avenues in game design it is also as far as i know the first non-fiction example of a vr device that can actually kill the user and it won't be the last you can bet your bottom dollar this will not be the last there will be other types of this floating around out there and i can see some sick twisted squid game type of video game competitions coming about because of a so-called piece of artwork like this so there you have it folks we got video game headsets that can get you sent up out of here if you lose your video game like we actually exist in this place and time right now where these things actually do exist like this is insanity at least it's insane from my perspective i'll put it like that because here's the reality there's probably a lot of goofballs out there that actually think this thing is cool they actually want to get their hands on something like this or they're probably in their mama's basement right now trying to whip up a device that looks like this and they're going to put it on and they're going to get themselves sent up out of here now now, here's the moral dilemma that I kind of face, right? Let's just say that you are one of those goofballs out there and you come up with a concoction like this, or you get your hands on a concoction like this that somebody else made and you decide to play this game and you lose and you get sent up out of here. Is that a part of survival of the fittest? What I'm saying is, was that ultimately what was supposed to happen to you in life that you were supposed to put this on and get sent up out of here so you could be an example for the rest of us not to do any goofy, stupid stuff like this? You know, I'm just saying, I'm just thinking about who would actually play this knowing that you could potentially kill yourself in real life. And then those people who do decide to engage in this type of video game system, was it by design? Were they supposed to do that? Was the almighty, whomever you might believe in, was this written in the clouds that they were supposed to do this and get themselves sent up out of here so the rest of us can go on to live a normal, sane life? I'm just trying to understand some things here because I don't get, maybe because I'm 42 years old, I'm not much of a video gamer. I can't remember the last time I played a video game outside of my iPhone, but I'm just saying, maybe because I'm kind of removed from that and I'd rather chase my thrills doing other stuff that, you know, doesn't cause me to possibly get sent up out of here due to my own free will and accord. Maybe because I'm of that mindset that maybe this is possibly, you know, just the way things are supposed to go for some people. I don't know. But anyways, that's kind of where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, I don't know what else to say about this. But, you know, if you do get your hands on something like this, you know, good luck to you, man. If you're a subscriber of this channel and you get your hands on this, you know, it was nice having you around. Subscribe to my channel. But other than that, I don't know what else to say. Say. Anyways, this is your boy Tech G. Those are my two cents on this. Y'all be safe out in these streets. Peace.